Hello, mortals, and welcome to the penultimate episode of Dice X Machina. Uh, I don't have a title for this episode. I'll, I'll think of a title later. I just realized because I didn't have a, a solid, defined idea what we're doing, so I, I wanted to uh, to let the story be the story as it as it plays out. So we'll have to find a title as we play. That'll be fun. Um, with me, as always, is my illustrious cast. Let's say hello, first of all, to, they look amazing, so I want to say hi to them first. Hello, Omega. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Uh, I'm Omega Jones, also known as Critical Bard. I am uh, playing Zendar, the half-Gorgon artificer wizard, uh, who, you know, is chilling, being dedicated to Farika, having a good time, uh, discovering stuff, and yeah. Uh, more discoveries to be had. Big discovery to be had, hopefully, tonight. Uh, we'll see how Callie plays that out. Uh, speaking of Callie, let's say hello to Callie's player, Ashlyn. What up, everyone? Oh, I thought I was muted. Sorry about that. Hi, I'm Ashlyn. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> they heard all those uh, bad things you said about them. Yes. <laughs> Darn it. Uh, I play Callista, a Leonin warrior. And, oh, I got that right. No, I didn't. Fighter. Leonin fighter so close i play a leonin fighter and she's an iconoclast and uh yeah a lot of discoveries last uh episode and uh we will be talking about it very very soon so yeah excellent let's go over to our friend uh jordan jordan say hello hi there how's everybody doing i'm jordan pridgen and i am playing lysandros who is a satyr rogue Seder Rogue, who is an arcane trickster and kind of a follower of uh, Phoenix and stuff, because he, he's a bit of an illusionist and a trickster and everything like that. And he's a big gambler, and he has a mix of an enormous amount of money from one thing and just, like, years and years of debts from other things. So, uh, yeah, he's all over the place. Uh, but I think he's fun. <laughs> I think he's fun too all right good and finally uh, we don't have video for her her camera's being a little bit wonky tonight we are working on getting a display picture up for her but last but not least let's say hello to joy hello i am oh there i am i'm looking at the stream oh great <laughs> magically popped up uh i am playing mara fine a satyr who is a bard and she has been on this adventure and kind of Sort of a little bit found out the answers to what happened to her past, but I it could be the end of that story or it could not be. We don't know yet. <laughs> we'll find out soon. All right. And we are aiming for a $250 goal uh, for the episode. If we hit $250 each night, we allows us to continue to put content like this on the air and also to pay our cast for doing this kind of content. So, But even if you can't afford to back us, we do really appreciate your support as viewers or listeners, however you consume our show. So please spread the word and share the stream with your friends and your family, or perhaps with a raid like, we, like our friend Lore Explorers did. So thank you very much for raiding us, Lore explorers uh thank you to joy for for gifting some subs to our audience hey. thank you very much for that i realize i haven't done that this entire season i was like <laughs> what the heck <laughs> oh there you go i think i might actually be up for that too um and as a bonus incentive if we hit that 250 tonight you'll actually unlock a live pool from magic the gathering deck on arena we actually did it two weeks ago and it actually influenced last episode quite a bit last episode was titled a thirst for meaning which came from that deck we also had callie as the hero of the pride which was also from that deck and we also brought in the uh, blight bless I, I learned how to pronounce it, and then I forgot again. Kettlebly. Kettleblopus. Kettleblopus. Thank you very much. And Jake, and with wherewithal, even put it in the uh, Discord, and I still got it wrong. So Kettleblopus. <laughs> Mix six Pickleix. Uh, that's who was. But they, they were the monster because of those cards. And uh, so there we go. You know what? Tonight's episode, Enigmatic Incarnation, because that was awesome. That was the big card that was pulled, and we haven't used it yet. So sweet. That's a good one, considering the twist that we had last week. So that is uh, that is some fun ways that you can directly influence the show. We had some monsters. We had major plot beats. We had an episode title that came from that. So that's the kind of stuff you can do to affect the show. 
But if you don't want to affect the show and you just want to say hey and have us say hey back to you, we'll be contractually obligated to do so. Just a $15 tip will allow you to send us a message that we will read live on the air. We call it a message from the gods. So you can send us your goofy or heartfelt messages and you can crush our fundraising goals all in one. And now I'm going to pass it on over to Ashlyn, who has agreed to read a little bit of the, uh, the ads for us. Wait, you, you mean that's not actually a message from the gods? You don't know. Okay. Right. Roll, roll an insight check. <laughs> I'm not good at insight. <laughs> All right. Uh, so a message from our sponsors. Uh, thanks to our season sponsors, Roll20 and Hero Forge, for supporting us. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Roll20 gives us the feel of the tabletop virtually. Uh, we get access to great maps. You get the tokens, sound effects. Uh, dynamic lighting, and so much more. Uh, use exclamation mark Roll20 in chat for more info on that. And if you type exclamation mark Hero Forge in chat, you get to check out the wonderful world of customization tools they've created. And they are incredible. You've seen our characters throughout the adventure we've had this season, uh, which we've all created in Hero Forge. Uh, we also have a partnership with Die Hard Dice. Uh, you can save 10% at Die Hard Dice by using code ROLLDICE at checkout. Uh, use the command exclamation mark DH Dice in chat for links and info. And you can order our friend Critical Bard's dice set as well. They it's might good... be sold out though. Sorry. Oh, oh snap. Ooh. Well, you it, can hope so you to missed order your them chance, someday. People. Yeah. Unless they were limited edition, then you snooze, you lose. But I will say that dice in general makes a really good gift for the holidays. So it even does. if you don't get Critical Bards dice, you can get other dice and you can go, these are very similar to dice that were Critical Bards dice. <laughs> yes. Hey, also everybody who is watching us on YouTube, thank you so much. Do us a solid. Click that like, click that comment, subscribe, smash that bell and the whole nine yards. It helps the show and the channel as a whole. We really appreciate it when it happens. And finally, you there's a really cool way you can support the channel. You can use coffee, K-O-F-I. Enter exclamation point coffee in the chat to check it out. Coffee basically works the same way as your tips normally do, but you also have the ability to become a subscriber and join us in our Exploration Society for a monthly amount, which gives you all the same perks and benefits that you would get if you followed us on Patreon, but it also gives you the ability to unlock cool things like toasts and messages from the gods, which are real, in the chat right here during the show. So check that out. Plus, coffee doesn't take a cut. So the channel gets nearly 100% of your tips, except for those little bits of like fees that PayPal takes that we can't do anything about. So, you know, life is what it is. But we want to thank you so much for your support. I don't know why this voice is what I'm doing with it, but I'm stuck in it, so we're going for it. And with that out of the way, uh, it is time to begin the episode, the, the second to last episode of the series. And as I said, the name of the episode, I don't know why I'm saying it in this weird way. The title of the episode, Enigmatic Incarnation. But I wanted to begin... We've had a lot of, of of our audience comment on how much they enjoy having Jordan recap the show in character. <laughs> so this is this is not exactly canon, but I just want to hear your Lysandros try his best to recap the season of, of Dice Ex Machina as he remembers it. So, you know, there's a leeway there because you can have some All fun. Right. But let's just see how like how let's do, let's just I want to see how close you are. Okay, so when things started out, basically we were going around and waiting for God shit to happen. I was following Callie around for the most part because it seemed like the safe thing to do. Dee went off and did whatever it is Dee does in her normal time, and uh, then we ran into a person with snakes in their hair and someone who I am determined is going to be my very best friend uh, but at some point in the future. The four of us ended up chasing down someone who wasn't D and had the uh, just complete audacity to be, to look like D, even though she wasn't. And uh, we ended up finding her, her and then all the four of us ended up fighting a, a, a giant water monster who just kind of came out of the, the ocean and attacked us. Uh, we assumed that this was God shit starting to happen, so we followed a cat to a lady who confirmed that it was God shit. And uh, then she told us that we had to find five kings. Uh, we wandered off and immediately found one of the kings who ended up being two people who were both very strong ladies, who were minotaurs, who dropped us into a big pit where we then had to walk around uh, a, a labyrinth. We died over and over and over again, uh, but then one day we didn't die. Like that worked out pretty well for us. 
We got out of it. They gave us a sword, which turns out is really good. Uh, we went to found D, actually D this time. Uh, we weren't forgetting someone else and had to be in a pit. Oh, wait, another pit. No, uh, it was just in a, you know, coliseum. Basically, we had to fight people there. First, we were fake fighting people, and then people showed up who didn't know we were fake fighting people, and they started real fighting. But it turns out we're pretty equipped for that, too. So we fought them. And then a big thing showed up because everyone was upset that we were fake fighting and it made it upset. And then the sky got upset too. And it came down and, and started real fighting us, which, you know, good, at least someone already started the real fighting because we would have just been really thrown off if, if we had started fake fighting that thing. But uh, luckily, because we had the nice big sword, we beat the real thing. And the crowd was like, all right, this makes up for all the fake fighting you did earlier. Following which we then had to go meet up with uh, Callie's family who were upset because a uh, big fire-breathing bullshit bull uh, had screwed everything up, and it was Callie's sister's fault. And Callie's sister, who is dead because Callie killed her, <laughs> sorry, uh, was causing big problems. So they were like, who can we call who knows how to kill Callie's sister? Ah, the one person who's killed Callie's sister before, Callie. Uh, so she came to town and had some heartfelt moments uh, with her, her pride, and we went into a cave where uh, she started seeing some visions and it turns out there was a spirit there. And it whispered dark secrets into Callie's ear, which the rest of us don't know. And uh, now we've managed to get two out of the five kings that we needed. Because one of them was the king of pride, who was Callie's family. Because pride is also a term that has to do with lions and stuff. And as far as I can tell, that's where we are now. Sitting in this cave. <laughs> and then we unfreeze. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea that everyone else is standing around you and you're just telling them what's going on. I'm like, yeah, we know. We've lived it. What? The, what? Why, why now? Like, this isn't for you. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere, somewhere, Phoenix is like, excellent. Um, <laughs> okay. And that is where we pick up. There's some some differences there, but that's okay. I think I, I might have missed close. a couple I things. That was pretty impressive. I was trying to go uh, quick. I'm, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a point of inspiration for being a, a good sport about that. But I am yes. changing how we do inspiration on this show. By the way, there's only two episodes left, but we're doing it anyway. Um, <laughs> what's that? You're. I think you're muted. No, I was laughing. Like, yeah, we're gonna change how we do inspiration two episodes before the end. Here's why. <laughs> I realize. I realize that the the chat gives us rerolls, and so having inspiration negates. Like, it takes away from one use of the reroll. Really, I, I want you to have to use chat rerolls so you can beg the chat for rerolls. So I'm changing. I I was joking on someone. So someone said on Twitter that they were like, okay, if D and D was gonna add one more ability check a score, what would it oh. be? And my answer was, it'd be a new ability called some bullshit. And the idea is that when you don't really know what you're supposed to roll for something, because it falls outside of the nebulous area of like what the ability checks are for, the DM's like, I don't know, roll some bullshit. We'll see what happens. So my my new ability, my new inspiration for this show, only because of the rerolls, is that when you have inspiration, it means that one roll at some point you can roll with your proficiency bonus, even if it's not something you're normally proficient in. And that is what I'm giving you inspiration for. So you're inspired. You're better at doing the thing you're going to do. Mm. And, and so basically, get, you're basically getting free proficiency. If you already have proficiency, I will still let you have expertise on it. So you have a chance at rolling really well, but you have to choose it strategically. So Nice. Yeah, so that I'm I'm basically I'm, I'm modifying my some bullshit role into this game because I realized oh that's a good way of letting people get permission get inspiration without negating the generous donations from our audience who give us free rolls. So All right. there we go. So there we go. With that out of the way, uh, we are going to begin the actual story. We are still in the cave. Callie's sister Dia Damia Dia, she has been put to peace. She's been transformed into sort of a spiritual cat and it's symbolic of her soul being put to rest and being able to find comfort. But she whispered something in the ear of Callie yes. before she went. And that is exactly where we're picking up from. We are still in the cave. Callie is standing up on what was kind of an altar. The altar. The, the kind of mist, the heightened memories of the space are fading a little bit. The energy of, of your sister's um, form, uh, Eidolon, is kind of fading away. And sure. let, so a lot of the blight that was like unnaturally in the area is starting to seed. The, the 
corruption is not necessarily gone per se, but it's not being exemplified anymore. It's not being amplified. Right. And that's where we are. Okay. And she had just whispered in my ear, uh, could you remind me what exactly she whispered? She whispered, your friend is the son of Farika. Mm -mm. Yes, yes. Okay. And so things are disappearing. And she, I feel like Kelly would definitely be like dazed. And then she'd probably just slowly turn and kind of... We should get back. Is it all done? Did we win? Yeah. Did you win? Yeah. I, we. She's she's at peace now, and uh, I have a lot. I'm I'm tired. And I let's let's get the sword. And as as you're starting to head out, um, Ceza looks at you like she wants to say something, but chooses not to take her moment right now. So she just kind of nods and follows and leads you back to the Pride Rock. And things are settling. The um, Catabloopuses are are gone. They've, they've faded down. However, there was a promise given to Zindar that they would try their best to scoop up some of their their like discharges to to give you a potion of some sort out of those. I believe that I already told you what mm -hmm. that would do. Um, it is uh, it gives you a free cast of the spell Bane. Uh, yep. Plus, it deals two d four of uh, I said damage. It should be necrotic damage because it's like rot and thing. So you basically have a chance to cast Bane on something, and it's basically like uh, like splash range. So, oh, I don't take that damage. No, they take no, damage. they take it. It's like it's like you're throwing. It's like you're throwing a. Oh, uh, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah. Yes, that yeah. makes more sense. Yeah. You, uh, if, I mean, if you if you drink the potion, you'll take the damage. Yes, and you'll have Bane yes. cast on you. But if you throw it at somebody mm. else, you're casting the spell. So maybe yeah. Yeah. Well, that was good. And that is that is where we are now. Um, your mother nods at you, but she doesn't know if you want space or if you want to speak to her right now. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, hey, mom, it's, uh, it's done. She's, she's gone for good this time. I, I know that must have been very hard for you. I'm, I'm sorry that you had to do that. I'm, I'm sure it was just as hard for everyone else to experience. So, I mean, it, it, she was part of the entire Pride, so I, I get it. Just doing my part for the Pride. And I'm glad I had a group of friends here to help. Your friends are quite strong. And she'll kind of like look over her shoulder and look at them and then leave like a lingering glance on uh, Zendar. And be like, yeah, they're really something else. I have a passive attendant. There's no way in hell I saw it. Would that be something that I would notice since I'm pretty observant? What's your passive? Um, passive insight, not passive perception. Okay. Oh, go. interesting. Well, because you're reading, you're reading emotions. That's Kelly, true. So, I mean, I, I, you definitely noticed that she looked at him, but it, I'm, I'm seeing if you noticed that the inflection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, because I was like, I know that's a character trait of mine. I do that on purpose because I like to watch people. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I am gonna. You know what? I will let you make an insight check at advantage because that is a character trait of yours. So passive and. No, that's passive yeah, intent. Let me, let me look at your sheet. Passive insight is 14. Okay. Um, you good? 
make an insight check for me at advantage because that is a thing your character does do a lot of so one of these days i'm going to learn this and it's going to be great <laughs> Hey, it'll be after yeah. next week's episode um, <laughs> oh my God, guys, start over um wait where is that it is in your your insight would be plus four. Oh gosh yeah you're invest if it's shame was an investigation you're passing investigations to the roof so hey. roll roll a d20 and add four to it at advantage you can roll it twice i still don't see this thing that you're talking about Oh, oh um, your it's under your skills. Yeah. It's in your. It's between history and intimidation. Wow, I am so. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you tell me the roll? Plus four, plus four. Plus yeah, so your insight? Your, your insight is plus four. So yeah, roll, ah, roll your it. insight now. Oh my yeah. gosh. You're, you're proficient in insight. So. Uh, I think I rolled it. Oh, there it is. Well, I rolled it twice as per usual. So oh. the first one's like, um, well, well, you were rolling, but you're allowed anyway. this time. Yeah, I was telling you about the advantage. So you're allowed to do that. Oh. Both for 19 and 16. So <laughs> after all that, you didn't see anything. No, yeah, after all that, <laughs> I, think, I would have been like, what? I no. Think, yeah, I think, <laughs> if you imagine if it was 19 and 16. Yeah, after all that, I think, I, Ashlyn, do you think it was pretty obvious what you were doing when she, for 19? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she definitely would have sensed that, like, something's off. Like, I'm not, like, angry, but I'm definitely, like, I'm definitely like forcing comfort when I am very bothered. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, well then, would it be fine for me to ask or like, not really like call out Callie, but like just kind of be like, did something happen? Yeah, do you uh, want to do that right now or do you, yeah. are you holding on? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because it's very fine. It's a good if, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> since my insight's so good. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. What, Marfine? Uh, well, I noticed specifically looking at Zad Endar, and your tone was a little off. So it wasn't like that before. So I was wondering if something happened. Oh, um, we, it was, is something we can, yeah, we, we, we can talk about it later. All right. Well, now I want to know what's going on. Stella Luna, thanks for the raid. Hey, hey thank me. you, everyone. Thank you. Hello. Uh, well, we, we should talk about it later. Not in front of my mom or anywhere near the pride probably she said the last part under her breath probably yeah but you are right in front of your mom yeah. she's like, okay no i understand there's a lots of there's a lot of things that are private for champions so but just know that your exile is over and it was our our folly to let it go this long and we are sorry. I, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. And I, I I, don't know when I'll be back, but I will be um, because I, my, my home is my pride and I'm here to, to serve the pride and support us. But I don't think my time is right now. So I have other stuff to attend to with them. But I will be back. But we we also need a sword, weapon, thing. Well, it's not a sword, but we do have an artifact that is fairly powerful. In fact, it belonged to your sister. And I believe that. I don't believe that it is what corrupted her, but I do believe that wielded by the wrong person, it could be used for great destruction, but 
wielded by someone more pure of hearts, it could be used for some good. And she nods to Seza, who pulls a bracelet from her arm that is in the shape of a serpent. And she snaps it down and it turns into a staff that takes the shape of a pair of petrified serpents that had formed around a wooden rod with an orb kind of in the middle. If you've ever seen the kind of like the medical symbol. The, the the uh, or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it looks like that. And there's something odd about it, almost like it doesn't feel like it's made of any material that you've seen on Theros. Um, and I will let whoever wants it add an item to their inventory called the Staff of the Serpent that is available on your D&D Beyond. Uh, I will read this information while someone, while you just to let you know, uh, the staff takes the form of the, I described the Petrus, uh, the serpents. Uh, it was originally created on the plain of Ravnica in the halls of the Golgari right. swarm. It is an artifact infused with the powers of life and death entwined together in a circle of death and rebirth. While the staff is on your person, you gain the following benefits. This is pretty powerful stuff. I used that. I think I used the staff of the Archmage as a base for this. I can't remember now. I, I had two staffs that was going between. I can't remember which one I used now. Listen, the literal um, snake man is staring. Yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I I made these for reasons, but I also believe in free will. So um, your proficiency I bonus. Think we should just put them all in Lysandros and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, he just uses the sling. He doesn't ever use him for anything. Um, <laughs> your proficiency bonus to intelligence arcana and intelligence history checks are doubled. Uh, you can't be blinded, charmed, deafened, frightened, petrified, or stunned. Uh, returned or other undead with a challenge rating of two or lower will not threaten or attack you unless you harm them. Uh, you can wield the staff as a plus three quarter staff that deals an extra 10 or 3d6 necrotic damage on a hit. So it's actually pretty useful in battle. Um, the Staff of the Serpent has seven charges and retains uh, some charges at dawn. Um, so it has the ability to invoke a curse. And when it has this curse, um, a creature that you see within 60 feet of you must uh, take a constitution saving throw or be cursed. Uh, while they are cursed in this way, they cannot regain hit points and they have vulnerability to necrotic magic. Um, Let's see here. Uh, cycle of the Serpent. When a bear of a staff inflicts necrotic damage on a creature, it may use a bonus action to heal another creature for half that amount using one of the staff's charges. Uh, the creature must be within the same attack range as the one that inflicted damage. You're basically transferring someone's pain into somebody else's partial mm -hmm. healing. Um, and then there is the ability to uh, destroy the staff over the knee, um, but you have to be attuned to the staff to be able to do that, so someone can't just grab it from you and break it. Uh, but the staff if the staff is dis destroyed, it, re it releases all the remaining magic in it, which causes everyone in the area to make a DC 18 dexterity saving throw or take 24 D10 necrotic damage. So it's Ooh, oh real gosh. bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, so that's a, that is a dead man switch that happens right there. Um, and so, yeah. And then that's actually part of the flavor of the actual item that I use for this. So yeah, there's, some, there's, there's some text in there that's not quite flavor for this, this show because I didn't delete it, but it's there. So. Well, let's test that last thing out. <laughs> <laughs> and we all make new characters. Sort of remember, yeah. Remember, remember, when they, remember when they killed Callie's whole family by breaking the <laughs> Our heroes. <laughs> so. What does this do? Well, I think we all know who's getting that. Callie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, yeah. I mean, items. Zendar definitely looks at it and goes, that was your sister's? Her, yeah. She was definitely way more a magic user than uh, anything else. Her and Seza really uh, bonded over that. And uh, she was connected to, uh, to Farika? Yeah. Yeah, she was. 
then that staff makes sense. Yeah, it does. It really does. Do you want it? Um, hmm. I mean, it's got your little buddy on it. And I point at the snakes. I feel like, yeah, Dari is on my shoulder. Mm. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ask it for it. <laughs> yeah. He's like, get it. Um, <laughs> I, um, can I, can I see it? Yeah, by all means, please. Oh, yeah. And he'll hold it and just kind of look at it and study it for a second. You feel a sense of comfort when you hold it. Like that vague feeling of when you were a child and you would come home after a long day of being out playing or, or working on something and come home and your dad was cooking up a meal or some sort of comfortable, just warm beverage of some sort and maybe playing some music or telling stories and you just felt safe and protected. Um, yeah, I, I probably, um, should be the one to hold on to it. I probably can access it. Um, I don't know what it does yet, but I'm sure it's, if it's one of those big artifact things, it's probably, uh, I mean, like your, 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 your axe thing and, and, um, what does Lysandros have? Oh, and your, I got a sword, and your sword. He he flips it around a little bit and it does its like don't do that uh, dreamer thing. <laughs> the fire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'll 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 hold on to it. Okay. All My right. Yeah, we'll be really excited to see this, but he probably shouldn't. <laughs> Pretty dangerous. Well, seems like we got three of these five god killers. Or whatever you know, they're or just powerful weapons on us. Seems like there's two to go. And we got to go close. to the king underground and the right freak and the free king. king. I kept wanting to say false in my head, and I knew that wasn't it. <laughs> the well, free king uh, and the king underground. What? Um, underground probably means literally underground. F free could be anything. Yeah. Is it I, like... mean, I don't Look, know. I say we just start digging and see what happens, right? Or uh, see if there's like a cavern system somewhere. Uh, I, I don't know. Honestly, if we just kind of go down, eventually we'll be underground and we'll find the king underground because he'll like show up and try and get taxes from us or something. Isn't that how kings work? I mean, our luck, it's probably Erebos who has it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That guy kind of <laughs> hates you. Or does he yeah. like you? I don't remember I don't how that all know. ended. Either way, Wait. we've managed so far to find things out pretty much by uh, letting fate sort of stumble us into it. So I say we find uh, people who live underground or uh, we could try and head to Nyx somehow. I don't know how we do that without, I don't know, dying or something. But I uh, look. Is, are, we, is, are we still in front of our mom? Probably. Probably, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm like, let's just... If you if you want to say you away, information. <laughs> Look, I've never gotten anywhere by being subtle. It's never worked out for me. But when you say the things you want, sometimes people know about it and then they give it to you. Or they try and stop you from doing it. And the way they stop you tells you where it is. Besides, the pride knows everything. Like we're we're the, the swift claws. We we are in the know, I guarantee. Actually, it's a good question. Mom, <laughs> do you have any idea where any of these other kings can be found? Well, let me, I'm gonna roll for her. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a roll. I gotta see if I have a, I don't know if she, what she would know for this. Um, I did not expect this NPC to be asked this question. So now I have to figure <laughs> out what she would know. Rip. Give me one moment here. 
Is there a Leonin character? A monster? There should be. Or just... Okay. A Kano class. There might be like a typical... Yeah, let's see here. I'm just gonna do... Ah, whatever. I'll just do a, like a leader of some sort. Yeah. I'm gonna dig through looking for everything. If they built a Johnny into one. Yeah. Let's see here. Mythic Odyssey of Theros. Let's go over to our bestiary. Fleamance Lion. That feels like a pretty good character to be the mother. <laughs> so let's have that's actually no, that's a literal lion. All right. Uh Leonin, there we go. Leonin yeah. Iconoclast. There we go. Challenge rating of five. That sounds about right. Um, let's go ahead and have her make a history check, which is a just a plus one. She's the, the queen. She'd have proficiency. You're right. You're <laughs> right. And also, she rolled an 18. So I'm just going to say that she knows a lot. And she <laughs> says, well, far be it from me to challenge the knowledge of such illustrious champions. But I feel like perhaps you're taking the phrase underground a little too literally. There are oh. other definitions of the term underground. Like a den of thieves or something? Indeed. The oh. leader of the underworld could refer to Erebos, could refer to a criminal leader. Yeah. Not to Gorgon, though, because we realize she's not the big leader, I think. Or maybe she is. But I think she's going to be, if not the person, then the one who will take us there. Yeah. yeah. And now that you say it like that, it, uh, man, that makes sense. Yeah. As far as the free king is concerned, I've heard legends from Skull of Ale of a satyr who shirked his responsibilities to wander freely despite being all right well you know what i think is that we can't go in two directions at once so let's go deal with the underground king thing and then you know we can cross the other bridges as we come to him a, a maid tan is going to cover lysandros's mouth for a second <laughs> I'm sorry. He just cut off uh, what you were saying so we can have the information. As you say that, a wet wet mage hand goes into your ear as well. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Can you please finish the information so we can have it uh, once we get done with the other one? (laughs) That's about all that I know. I know that there was a king who wandered from his home and left his people behind in order to have his own freedom. A ru- being a ruler is a bit of a cage of its own. But mm. I don't think that could be anyone still alive. That was over a hundred years ago. So it's just a rumor, really. It's just one of those folklores that you hear across the mountains. You know, how tales come down from the Vale into the plains and get embellished by, especially by those who believe in the might of the gods. They sure like to run their mouths. Well, hey, sounds to me like we know where one of these people are, so, you know, time's a waste and... Would Kelly... Uh, I can't remember in season one if if we learned of any backgrounds. Um, um I don't think you distinctly did. Okay. Um, I think because I think that Phoenix came to Lysandros in a vision, but part of the arrangement that Lysandros made with Phoenix was he could not tell anybody else the information he had because Lysandros tricked Phoenix. The only other thing I could think of is there was the memory of the make a history check for me. Yeah, because it's hard to separate player knowledge from character. No, I'm totally. like, what did I learn? That's why I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna cut to Skill. the dice and with the dice be the power all right let's see what we got here you said history at disadvantage because it's a very vague memory okay yeah history at disadvantage. Rip. all right so i got an 11 and let's see i got an 11. okay with an 11 
I think that you have been through a lot in the last year or so. And a lot of information has come through you. You have this nagging feeling yeah. in the back of your head that it means something, but you, you don't quite, you remember, you just kind of remember like a, a raspy voice of some sort, but you can't quite place it. And that's yep. what I'm going to give you for the 11. Sounds good. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, let's, let's, let's get going. We, uh, we, we need to act fast. We don't know when another one of these things is going to show up. Exactly. And I mean, we've got somewhere we need to go that is uh, going to be fruitful, right? Like let's, let's figure that out. Hey, and there's four of us, maybe four weapons is all we need, right? Mm, we probably need all five. Yeah, well, there's no way to know. I think it's a very clear way to know because they said we need a five. Yeah, well, you know, that that's kind of how these stories work. They say something, and they say it in a certain way to make it seem like that's how it's got to be. And then you subvert that story uh, so that it becomes more interesting. Trust me, I know a little bit about how, like, fate and stories work here in Theros. I've got a bit of experience on it. I know it doesn't seem like it, but uh, I've been around the block a bit. Either way, to Melitus. He just stares at you for a bit and then walks off. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, I will say one thing. Lysandros <laughs> usually like wears exactly what he's thinking on his face. Oh. But when you look at him this time, you, you actually can't read at all what his like expression, what his feeling is on the whole thing. Like he's obviously being a little weird about it, but surprisingly it's really hard to like see what he thinks because I do technically have the God gift uh, inscrutable uh, of the whole thing, which was given right. to me. What does that mean? Well, it means that uh, one, I'm immune to effects that have people try and read my mind or my emotions in any sort of magical way. And nice. uh, I have resistance to psychic damage and any checks made to uh, a certain my intentions or sincerity have disadvantage. Oh, that's actually very nice. Yeah. It's not my old one, but I was given it because my mind was messed with. <laughs> and yep. I came out of it more in control of my mind than I was before. Yeah, I took away his, his lucky or his, uh, his, uh, his, no, I, I yeah, I, yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I was like a mythic hero or whatever. Yeah. You had a, yeah, you were, uh, heroic destiny, I think was your, your, yeah, doctor. heroic it, destiny. It was a lie. Right. It was a lie from Phoenix. So uh, I got replaced by that. Really quickly, guess so while we're no, we're not stopped, but while we're here, yeah. um, something I meant to ask you: we we're talking about piety, and we talked about some stuff. Am I? What is my piety level right now? I thought uh, we talked about it going up, but that we didn't actually do anything with it. So I guess so yeah, I was gonna bump you up to whatever the next level was from where you were already. Okay, so I should be a disciple. Yes. Cool. Great. Then I can do all that on my side. I just wanted to make sure. Cool. cool. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Yeah, right. Currently, currently, uh, Marifine is at a piety. Uh, I think that's the second level of piety for for uh, Krufix because she chose the unknown instead of just causing destruction on the Minotaur. And yeah. then, um, Callie, I think you're probably at a higher level for your Iconoclast at this point, too. Yeah, I killed um, a, a Arcanon. Yeah, and also, like, you've, like, like you've you've like resisted some godly things. Like you were, you know, the God that tried to get you to recruit, to work for him more. You told him no. And so, yeah, I think that, uh, I think we're probably going to put you at the next level of we you know, like class as well. Sweet. Yep. And like right, you're you. still, but you and Phoenix are still on the outs. So sorry. Um, I, I, yeah. I still, whenever I roll a die, almost out of habit, just like give a little like prayer to Phoenix. But one thing that uh, followers of Phoenix know is you don't really like pray to Phoenix. You just like trust in him and live in his live by his ways, because if you get Phoenix's attention, it can be bad. <laughs> yeah, I think actually that's a good point. I think the fact that you went back to him despite what he had done to you, and I think the respect that he has for you as someone who tricked him a little bit and he knows that you tricked him. I think he does have a little bit of favor for you. And I think that 
you were you're not a votary yet, but I think you are a devotee. I think the fact that you went back to him. Um, so, well, you already had that, didn't you? Yeah, I, I was um, that because that's the disguise self. Thing. Yeah. Then I will let you have the votary. Yeah, I don't, votary, votary, however it's pronounced. Um, so it. you you have advantage now on charisma deception checks, which feels pretty in line with you. So. Hmm. All right. So we begin to head back. Do we go by boat? I assume. Um, well, from where you are, if you're heading to, where are you going to? Do you are you going? Cause we're going to go back to Melitus to go see the Gorgon. Okay. Yeah. I don't think you can get there by boat from where you are, unless there's a river. Um, I yeah, think I'm not have... really super up on Theros's map stuff yet, so I wasn't. Sure. No, fair. And also, Theros is a weird. It's a weird place where the, uh, <laughs> the landscape changes on a regular basis. So, because where are we at right now? Um, you're kind of in the open, like, plains area, like, kind of near, kind of in between, not quite to Satessa, but getting on the way to Satessa, and kind of in the middle of the open plains. So I think I think you would have to walk to get to Okay, Melitus. cool. Yeah, yeah, we'll just begin the journey of traveling and all that jazz. Um, are we perhaps still... we can... Oh, go ahead. Uh, are we still on the same day, or did we rest at all, or no? I think if you're traveling to Melitus, I'll let you have a long rest after that travel. Um, while you're while you're traveling, I'm sure that would be part of your your traveling. Yeah, I would say oh. while we're. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, let me know when the uh, staff is on my sheet so I can forget it. Oh, you can add it whenever you want. Uh, if, you, if you go into D&D. Oh, I can just go, first. duh, that makes sense, duh. I can yeah. Just, yeah, I think, now one thing I do want to say, I think I accidentally took off the um, the immunities because I was going to do something weird and I didn't fix it again. Mm -hmm. So you do have those immunities, it's just not, they're not attached to the item right now, but I will fix that later okay. and you can re-add it. So, but just know that you are immune to those, those conditions. Cool. And I also, I want to say that like, that is sort of a mix of the staff and how it's reacting to your demigod ability. Cool. It's kind of a thing that you would probably, it's kind of activating in you that it's like attuning to you and like bringing your own strength out. But you, maybe you don't, I don't think Zendar realizes that yet, but that is what's mm -hmm. happening. That makes sense. All right, so you travel, do you have any conversations or what happens while you're traveling? Uh, yeah, I would say that after we get away from the pride, uh, Callie will, um, Callie will kind of, well, we're, I'm assuming we're traveling by foot, um, when we break down for the night, um, if we're at like a campfire or something, Callie will, uh, I guess call everyone's attention and then, uh, yeah, start a conversation, which she's very awkward about. <laughs> uh, but she'll be like, uh, Zendar, what, um, what do you, what do you know about your, your past? What do you um, know about your mom? When you ask that question, you see his face not drop, but there's a shift in um, his focus. Like, you know, he's always like going over his formulas and things and just working on stuff. Um, but as you ask that, he kind of just stops. Um, not much, unfortunately. Um, it's actually a... Um, Kind of a reason why I started going out on my own. Um, I wanted to, um, I mean, I like, you know, discovering stuff and I like uh, experimenting and, and finding new ways to um, to shape what's around us and, and make it um, beneficial or sometimes not um, in some cases. Uh, but uh, I also was... Uh, very curious to know who uh, who my mom was because I don't I've never met her. Um, my dad said um, he knew this lady and um, she was very nice. 
and, and helped him with his uh, work. Um, and they kind of bonded. And uh, uh, one day um, she, she was gone. And then some time later, he kind of opened his door and there was a, 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 a package, I guess. And you know, unwrapped it and it was me. Didn't know where it came from, but he figured, he thought about that day, but he never saw her again. And I've been trying to figure out who it was. You know, I kind of assumed, well, my dad's human. And he, like, looks down at himself. I'm not all the way human. So I thought if I go find the um, the Gorgons, maybe. Well, I thought it was the Gorgon because, you know, she's her name is Gorgon. Why would you take that name if you're not a Gorgon? Yeah. Um, she oh. did. Um. And so now my my next plan once we do this is um, go up and find the Gorgons, um, the actual ones, and see if they know anything, um, unless they try to kill me or something. But yeah, not much. Hmm. Why? Yeah, that's not a super normal question to ask after also glancing with portent at him earlier. Yeah, this is happening. I wasn't glancing with portent. I was just thinking, okay? With portent. Whatever. It was important thoughts. Um, what's, what's the best way for me to say this? Um... Well, my sister, when she, uh, when she, when she parted ways, she told me that um, someone among us was the child of Farika. And there's only one person I can think of, really, among us that would fit that bill. As you in the see... god? Yeah, as in the god. You see um, him just kind of stare. And then there's a mage hand that goes to his ear and starts to clean it out. Uh, um, that what? one wasn't me. <laughs> the the uh, the person that um, yes the. The god that was involved with my sister and all of that. And that whole thing happened and she is dead. And the person that happened to follow me and hang out. And that person is the, the child of her. Um, That doesn't make any sense. I don't think... F Freak. I don't think she would bang my dad. That's he's having a very hard time processing that. <laughs> he just kind of um. No, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not a a child of of Farika. I just. You know, follow her, and I and I, um, I, I, I do things to, to learn and to to discover. Like she like like she wants. She likes to uncover truths and truth and medicine and alchemy and and and, and she she wants to. She she, she she I'm not an ex. He pauses. 
<laughs> Callie gives you like the saddest look ever. Um, I'm just going to sit on that for a bit. Lysandros goes, you know, I keep this just for emergencies and pulls out like a, a very small extra wine flask from his thing. And uh, you've done me a solid a couple times. You know, you're not a big drinker, but you want some? On not even realizing that he has reached out and downed it in one go. That's the ticket. You know, let's just keep going. Let's just, you know, um, um, go find this underground person. Yeah. Um, I, I I will say, if it's okay, um, when we were going through those visions in the cave, um, I saw a lot of things about my sister that I didn't know. Uh, a lot of a lot of different like things I saw before. Like I was there, right? Like I I had I had been part of that. And I remember those memories, but I don't remember that that view of them, that perspective. And it didn't feel the way it felt to me back then. And seeing it there at that in that new way, it, it helped me understand that there are different ways to look at things. And I, I didn't think that was possible. And I don't know what to believe, but I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that don't let whatever is going through your head right now be the only way to look at something because there could be a whole different way that something is, if that makes sense. I mean, um, I could either look at it as Farika, my mother, or Farika, the goddess. It's kind of hard to shake either of those feelings right now. So I'm just going to not think about it. Um, I'm just going to hold on to the staff, and I'm going to use it if I need to. I'm going to... <clears throat> um, yeah, I'm just I'm I'm going I'm going to be. He definitely I don't know if we're like in a cart or we're just walking, but if we're walking, he, he definitely goes farther up and <laughs> just, just sits in that. <laughs> it's just um I kind of imagined you all sitting around like a fire, <clears throat> like you've made camp for the night. So mm. if you want to like step away, if you want to like yeah. if you want to like gonzo it up and like walk over somewhere and He's going to step away um, and just kind of sit with himself. Um, yeah. He goes away. He goes like next to a tree or something. Builds up a, a little smaller campfire that he starts with the wave of his hand. Um, his his staff, the staff is next to the tree and he just kind of sits, knees up, um, crouched, uh, well, sitting down, but knees up his book in front of him. Um, a magical quill just writing different equations and he just puts all of his energy into this for a moment <laughs> he's so uh, mm -hmm. Lysandros is going to go over to him real quick and I'll just say <clears throat> uh, hey Zindar look I, I can tell that you want a little bit of time to yourself which you know isn't my style but I, I, I can respect that but look I just wanted to say before you spend too much time dwelling on all of this you, you know this doesn't change who you are, right? Like, we get to pick who we are. <laughs> That's something we decide and we figure out. And no matter who our family was or who we were before, like, we have that power to make that decision. So just, this might change your context of how you understand who you are, but you're still you. And, I mean, you do a pretty good job at that, so... Write your stuff, and uh, we'll be over there. 
I really thought I had a spell and I didn't. Good. <laughs> um, Power um, word kill. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nah, but he, but he, he physically does not change what he's doing. It's not to say he's ignoring, but he's kind of ignoring. Mm. I'll actually, what I'm actually going to do is this for my own sake. Uh, if it's low, he did not hear it. Okay, he did. Cool. Just you, you, you see him like as you're talking, the quill just goes starts to write faster and faster in different equations. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Unless Andreas backs off and goes over to the the fire with everybody else. <clears throat> So, hey, that, that was kind of a humdinger, eh, everybody? Yeah, that was... Tell me about it. God stuff. Am I right? Just mess everything up. <laughs> but, hey, we're, uh, we're three sword weapon items, Kingslayer things in. So, yeah... She kind of just pushes the fire with her axe. Her god axe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's massive. So I like her like, just like <laughs> awkwardly pushing the fire. Look, you know what? I, I get that everybody's working through stuff and that kind of thing, but we've been way too dour recently. Okay. Look, I we have just solved three major challenges, and, and we know where we're going for the next one. And and who knows if we're going to even live the next day, right? Now, look, I, I've respected the way you guys do things, but just for a little bit, let's do things the way I do things. We've got a night, right? We, we're settled down here for the next day. So, hey, and he pulls out a, a much bigger flask of wine that he <laughs> had on him. For I, I feel like it's fair to say he would have collected wine at some point. I, I haven't actually uh, done that, but that's the sort of thing he would do. <laughs> I'll, be like, I'll come on, <laughs> let's revel a little bit, right? Let's enjoy our successes and drink away the things that have gone wrong because we're alive. And even if other people around us aren't or we've lost people, then, then we drink in their honor. We, we enjoy what we have right now. Come on. Marfine, you're a satyr. You gotta get it, right? Yeah, you know, this time once I I kind of understand you. That's what I like to hear. And um, he is going to go uh, with the uh, sword and just jam it in the ground and use the... Uh, the fabricate and have a table appear out of the ground made of dirt with uh, stone cups on it for everybody. And you'd be like, Zindar, you're welcome to join us if you feel like it. And he's just going to start like pouring out wine for everybody and pull out his lute and just start like playing some music and drinking. One thing that happens before... Zindar is or is not pulled away into that. I just wanted to real quick, I just want to check your spell list first before I all oh, right, never mind. We are at I forgot you only have fourth level spells because of your cross class. Hang on a second. Mm -hmm. So you are feverishly scribbling away in your spell book with the quill and you're very focused you're meditating and you don't even realize it until you've been working for quite a while but suddenly you look down at your book and you realize that almost as if guided by a force outside of your own scribbling a new spell has been added to your spell book it is the spell Blight. Ooh. It is a necromancy spell. Neat. That allows you to 
attack a creature with necrotic damage. And it seems pretty on point for something you might learn from a goddess who travels and tracks in corruption and life and the cycle between the two of them of decay and medicine i will then, definitely um realize that as i've like you know kind of flipped through looking at some of the other things just going over because again if i haven't really explained it well his spell book is a book of formulas it's a book of recipes mm -hmm. um so he's like going through and looking at things and as he says that page all of a sudden filled he just kind of stares at it shakes his head flips it goes back huh I don't like how this is adding up, and it's kind of weird, but I'm going to study it anyway. And he's going to um, look into that um, just to make sure he can replicate it how he needs to. Um, mm -hmm. I will say, however, Zendar does not move, at least for, for a long time. However, there is a small little green snake that goes up to his cup and just... Mwah. <laughs> okay, take inspiration. Uh, <laughs> and as you're as you're sitting around that fire, and as as Lysandros is gonna give out his whatever, I'll, I'll let you have your thing once I get through this. But uh, you just one of you, I'm not sure which one of you it is, but you just you hear a toast that says, "Worked late, so we'll catch the episode on VOD." But I am here to help Lysandros in reveling. Cheers. <laughs> and that is Cheers. a toast that comes to us from our friend with wherewithal yeah. and this seemed like a great place to Thank you have that joke and very we did nice. just get a very nice donation from phoenix in sunglasses so <laughs> it's totally not phoenix we'll see, at all. totally not phoenix at all so we'll <laughs> see if that person also has a toast for us in some moment but i wanted to uh if it seemed like a good moment to drop that toast in but now, I, after I've given that little gift to, I'm sorry, after Farika has given that little gift to Zindar, uh, let's go back to. We are getting a toast from Phoenix and Sunglasses, so I will, I will have fun. Is that is that it, Tom? Is that, is that in its entirety? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm doing this one as Phoenix because I love my Phoenix voice. I've done it all season, so Phoenix in sunglasses. So ten, my transition lenses are on. Uh, holds up a rubber chicken mm -mm. and says. Behold, a man. <laughs> that's it. That's the entire, that's the entire toast from feet out of sunglasses. Wow, Sandra's like stuff that. is really strong. <laughs> sure is. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you liked my toast. And then he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's handle this. What do you now that now that the floor is yours again? What do you what do you do? We just revel. There's no mechanical benefit that's being Im imparted. There's no uh, no greater purpose beyond that. Lysandros just thinks that, you know, after our successes and in the midst of our uh, personal pains and everything else, you know, sometimes you got to party. Just be free. A lot easier said than done, but totally right. <laughs> Do you all rest down for the night? Do any of you stay up beyond what would be a long rest, or do you all eventually go to sleep? Hmm. I go to sleep. <laughs> okay. I was trying to think if there was something that would keep keep me up, but I think like just with the days, because this is technically just back to back with all the minotaur stuff and everything so mm -hmm. yeah well the minotaur yeah. stuff you had a little yeah yeah your minotaur stuff yeah not the mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that, yeah it all happened and then you were teleported over to the yeah so it's like it's been a yeah. long day yeah it has been so, probably pretty exhausted you've been traveling lysandros will actually stay up for the whole night as everyone else kind of passes out and you know goes to sleep he'll just stay awake the whole time because he's found ever since that he held this sword he doesn't seem to get tired for whatever Ooh. reason. Right. You don't get interesting. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. yeah. Zindar definitely, if you look over, Zindar is just um, at the tree. 
that he has he was feverishly going over his this stuff with more so you know overworking yourself to not think about anything else who does that for a living um but uh yeah he definitely did not mean to crash but he crashed um at the, okay. at the thing Callie is curled up by the fire I'm just going to roll a d4, and I'm going to give you all numbers based on where you are on my screen. Four. Okay, we start with Marafine. Marafine, as you drift off into your sleep, you find yourself waking up, but you're immediately aware that the space that you're waking up in is not the space that you fell asleep on. You wake up comfortably again on the same deck of the ship that you saw once before in your dreams so long ago in Neolantan when you first met this group of people. And at the time you remembered that you were staring off into the horizon, that you were with these people and you find yourself there again only the horizon has changed. It is utter blackness without any hint of stars, except for a figure that is carved into the shape of the stars and containing that horizon within itself. Now, Mamar, find you have enough piety to know that the form that you are looking at is the form of Crufix, the god of the horizon that you worship and you find that your ship is not adrift on the open water, but on the edge of the world where waterfalls pour off the sides of the plain of Theros. And this creature, this being with four arms and no discernible features, this form carved out of the very night sky itself looks down on you and tilts his head to you and he says in a voice that whenever he speaks you tend to hear echoes of it coming from all directions as if there's not one single space this voice comes from i don't have a modulator so theater of the mind <laughs> you seem troubled and i don't know why I'm able to respond. Yes, he's speaking oh, okay. to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I guess it. I probably seem troubled because I didn't really get the answers I was looking for, and I thought there would be some sort of resolve as to why they did what they did in my past, but they were just they just didn't really care. They wanted to steal ours, and that was it. There was no rhyme or reason. They were just a bunch of minotaurs. I'm confused as to why you expected an answer. Because it... I don't know. I feel like... I feel like it's my fault. I should have been there. I should have done something, but I wasn't able to. So I just wanted to place the blame on something. So you believed that if you could find an answer, that it would absolve your sense of guilt. Probably. But sometimes guilt is a gift. Sometimes the guilt, the question of what else we could have done leads us to wonder what else we can do in the future. Have you not had adventures? Have you not seen the edges of this world you live on? Have you not made friends with 
these travelers that you have found? Well, one can constantly insist that I'm his friend, but I will never tell him that. Ha! Huh. Guess I find it amusing myself. You've had a journey, have you not? Yes, I guess that's true. What else is there to ask for? Us to win. That I cannot foresee. I hope for it. I believe you are our champions. But the uncertainty is the horizon. And that is all that I promise. Don't be so focused on destinations. Be focused on yourself and how you get there. That is my gift to you. And then you feel that kind of fade away. And that is the end of this little vision, the stream you had. How do you feel? Um, I mean, there's really not much, I guess I probably, well, Marifine probably feels as if that she realizes that that it was the pur purpose of it all. Like it was just, it led to doing more, uh, adventures and leaving the place instead of sitting around and wallowing in what could have been or what could have happened. So it was a reason to leave where where she was. Yeah, I think that's what uh, I think that was what Krufix would have hoped you would take from it. Not that it, he caused it to happen, not that it happened for a reason, but what you did with what happened is what was important in his mind, and hopefully in yours as well. I believe so. All right, let's see here. All right, interesting. Um, Zindar, you find yourself in that small home we talked about earlier, the hut that you often came to while your father would prepare meals or comfort for you. And it is uh, somebody just had somebody somebody's background has a lot of background noise. Is it possible to tr meet your mics if you're not in the scene? Um, um, there is scents in the air, but they're not the scents that you're used to of food or but maybe maybe a vague memory of potions that your father would brew for health reasons. But there are racks and racks covering the house of these potions and jars and concoctions and brews and ideas. And it is not your father that is standing there. It is a woman with green skin and snakes wrapping around her armored clad body and a golden helmet with a pair of snakes that are connected. And you can vaguely see bits of stars and moonlight and such shining through her and the snakes. And she says, I wondered how long it would take before you saw who you were. Um. Once he sees her, he uh, stares for a long time. Um, 
but if like the camera was panned on him, you could tell that he's not really trying to stare at her as the god, the goddess that's before him, but more so staring at the features that she has and trying to compare it to his own that aren't his father's. Um, ah, ever the inquisitive mind. And she kind of like turns and like adjusts herself and you see her form change into what you would know more commonly as a Gorgon, a full typical Gorgon. And this looks very much like you can see the features in this face. Now that the helmet is not shading and the snakes are not blocking things, you see this form that does look very similar to your own, but with a serpentine tail. And... So, uh, it's true. It is true. Your father and I were very close. He was one of my most devoted followers, and that led to more. It happens. And he kn knew that you were who you are? No, he did not know. He believed that I was a Gorgon. But he, I think he knew in his heart. And, and then you were gone. Left me um, to, um, be raised by my my father alone. It is true, but it is not because I do not care. This is just how it is. I cannot exist on that world for too long. I must stay here. Index and so like many children of mine over the eons I must let you be you far from my influence um, was it um, was it, uh, was I a, a, pers a, a purposeful creation or was I a, 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 an experiment? What is the difference between the product of one's labors and the products of one's craft. Well, there's a big difference, I would think. Um, I, I care for the things that I create and I put a lot of work into the things that I create, but once they're created, I have them. I, I hold on to them until I have a use for them. What is my use then? I did not create you to have a use. I created you out of the bond that I shared with your father. Your use is to be you, to spread your abilities, how you see fit. You seem to have chosen the healing side of my 
offspring, which I find pleasant. But I do not create, I just, do you ever throw ingredients together into pestle and mortar and see where, where it leads? Do you not often yourself scoop up the pieces of things that you find along the way with the intention of seeing what will happen when you use them? Are you not thrilled when you see the fruits of these labors? Are you not excited when you see these passions play out? It is the same. That's the thing. I'm always excited when I grow and I learn and I create, experiment and see what comes out of the nothing that I took. But I'm excited to see it and I'm with it. And I'm happy that you made my dad happy and I still follow you and I try to work in your name. I but know. knowing that a goddess kind of abandoned me doesn't make me feel that good. I, I understand this pain that you feel, I think it is different for me, but I, I do not feel that I abandon you. I, you could not be you if I was there all the time. You would only be shadow of me. You would only be belonging of goddess, but I set you free to be whatever it is that you create with yourself. I let you be your own experiment. And I watch from afar as you make me so happy. <sighs> then I, um, I mean, I'm here and I have done pretty good for myself, I think. So I'll continue to do that. And um, I do have a question, though. Does that make me like half a god or something? Do I get like a domain? Do I get to like have clerics and stuff? Maybe someday as your power grows, there will be time for such things. I am very protective of my secrets good reason. Do you know of your sisters, the Gorgons of legend? I create the Gorgons to see the world with knowledge. I created 100 of them, spread them throughout the world, bidding them with revelations to hide, but they did not feed this information to the world. They kept them for themselves to use as power. They hoarded it. They did not share it. And so I cursed them. 
and this is why they cannot look upon even their own reflection without turning to stone. Because knowledge is not meant to be kept, to be hidden. Knowledge is meant to be shared. You are not meant to hide. You are meant to be sought out. You are meant to be in the world. Learning. So the more you learn, the more you share with the world. Maybe those who have interest in similar things will find you. Okay, then final question, because I feel like we've probably been talking for a long time. Do I call you mother, mom, Farika, goddess, lady, what snakes? What do you wish to call me? I would like to test out how mom feels, but I don't know yet until I use it in a more applicable way. I will let this be your decision, for I will know when you speak with me what you mean in your heart. Wait, sorry, one last question. Can I tell dad or should he, would he like die of, of surprise and, and fear? And like, I don't want him to have a heart attack when he finds out he, you know, did the thing that two snakes do when they intertwine with each other and then had me and that was with a god. I think he'd be kind of freaked out about that. I would not phrase it in this way if if the choice is made. Um, but as I say, knowledge is not meant to be hoarded for power. So if this if you believe this is a kindness, it would not be corrupting your father's heart, then you tell him how you see fit. Thank you. You are very dear to me. And I believe in you. And you feel like the hint of a serpent kind of like graze you in a way like like when a mother like puts her arm. It's not a it's not a hug. It's not that kind of she's not that kind of mom. Um, not yet anyway, but she, she very much like you feel that gentle grasp and then that vision of yours fades. Lysandros, you don't fall asleep, but as you're sitting, keeping, keeping watch, keeping guard over your group, what are you, what are you doing? I think Lysandros just like watches everyone else just like sleep and have their own little god stuff and kind of just sits. And well, just to clear, you're not just just to be clear, you don't see them having all these. This is all happening. In no, no, no. Room. Okay, but I, I see them clear. all like fall asleep. <laughs> you're, I, I you're see them like all go from like reveling and drinking. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I can't hear all this stuff. I see them all go yeah. from reveling and drinking and just kind of lie there. And Lysandros just kind of decides, you know, he doesn't feel the need to sleep right now. He doesn't have anything that he feels like he needs to restart. You know, why not just enjoy the night, be by himself for a little bit? It's not something he does often. And when he does be by himself, like he is by himself in a very like grand scale in a lot of ways. But uh, uh, in, in a moment to moment basis, he kind of isn't. So he just like sits and kind of strums on his lyre by himself and uh, feels himself sober up over the course of the night. You don't have a vision. You've you've had your time talking with your god, and last time you did it didn't really end all peaches and sunshine, and you've kind of been through that journey. But as you play your lyre, what do you think Lysandos is running from at this point in his life? What is he running towards? What does he want to do? 
I don't think Lysandros has any idea what he wants to do anymore. Everything that was like part of his life when he was younger, everything he ran away from, he succeeded at running away from. Like he he is very, very successful at running away from his life. He has nothing. He owns nothing. He has very few connections besides his like debts to everything. And I think in a sense that there's almost like a zen to that. You know, like, I, I think sometimes Lysandros thinks about the things that could have been or the connections that he could have had and mourns that a little bit. But overall, I, I think despite his silliness, he's sort of come to a place where he almost entirely appreciates kind of living in the moment. Do you think that he feels at peace at this point with the decisions that he made? Does he think he made the right choice to leave the veil and not become the king? I think that I think that's not how he thinks about it. Regrets, like one thing he's kind of realized over the years is things just go on. You know, they move forward and thinking about how things were isn't useful or helpful. And like, it's so long since he made that decision that it's it's part of who he is now, you know? I, I think sometimes he regrets it a little bit, but uh, in another sense, I think that he sort of sees it not just as like a decision that was good for him, but like, or not, not the decision that he made, but the decision that had to happen because the more he's learned about fate, the more he's realized that, you know, it just sort of happens how it happens. Interesting. Cool. I just, I was curious how Lex Hendricks was doing and where he was at right now. Do you think he's happy being part of this group of oddballs and being part of this adventure and pursuing a noble goal like protecting the world? I think yes, but I think he's a little melancholy because he was completely, like, while he still had his heroic destiny and everything, which was just like an endless, listless revel kind of thing, he... Uh, there was never an end to anything and he could just, you know, be part of life. It's like, you know, how people are young and they act like they're going to live forever. He did that <laughs> very successfully for quite a long time. And I think even if it's not like, Oh, I'm, I'm going to die tomorrow or something like this, the events that are happening here feel like, feel like, you know, you can only tread water so long. Like eventually fate will find you. Things will happen things are going to move forward. So he knows that, you know, who he is in life is going to shift. And if anything, he just wants to be who he, he wants to be himself while he can. On that note, it's been about a year, roughly, since you first entered that cave that you, with Court of Arrestus and you spoke with Phoenix and things like that. And you are sitting here and you're playing the liar and you go to scratch. Do you have a, do you have a beard or I can't remember. Does that, does that, does that, okay. Yeah, I yeah, you, I've got like a goatee. You go to scratch your goatee and a little bit of hair kind of comes loose, just like a stray hair. And it's gray. Hmm. And you've never had a gray hair before. And this is the first time, perhaps, you realize that you are now growing older. You are aging again. Well, I guess debts were bound to catch up with me at some point. And he opens up his little book of debts and quietly writes down next to his own name, 100 years. Oh, interesting. I like that. What is what does that mean? I'm curious what you think what you think of that as. 
I think so. Lysandros has his book of debts that he keeps mm -hmm. track of everyone who he owes money to, because yeah. his philosophy when he was trying to beat fate was that just being like, I owe you a bunch of money and then running isn't a real debt. That's theft. You know, a, a debt is something that you do plan on eventually paying back. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's been lower key, but like eventually he plans on going through and trying to make his book even as to the best of his yeah. ability. Um, and just writing his own name there is just sort of like a reminder to himself that everything that he took, everything that he borrowed will come back to him. And eventually it is going to, well, his debt will come due. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, that is, that is how you spend your night reflecting on this life of yours and where you are now and how you feel about it. And everybody else makes it through the night. Um, Callie, I, I don't have a, a vision for you because you had a pretty substantial vision at the end of the last episode, but how does Callie sleep? What is Callie thinking about? What are, what's on <laughs> Callie's mind? I feel like Callie probably sleeps pretty, pretty well. Um, she's had a pretty rough, emotional, emotionally taxing day, um, especially for someone who doesn't deal with her emotions. Um, so she just kind of conks out. Um, and I would say she's not one to remember her dreams. So whatever it is she dreams about, um, which is probably like, Two, two Leonin cubs playing in a field. Um, probably oh. a reminiscent old memory of her and her sister that she can't quite remember or, or put anything down to, but it's definitely like subconsciously there. Um, and yeah, she sleeps really well through the night and kind of just like lets go of everything. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. You sleep soundly. Everybody does, except for Lysandros. But it says even you doze off a little bit at one point. But as you wake up, you're not in the spot that you all slept in. You wake up in the villa of Kia the Sage in Melitus, who first set you out upon your journey so long ago. And it's almost like the ground was there. It's not, it's like the world shifted around you. It doesn't feel like you were pulled there. It's just that Theros decided this is where you were meant to be this morning. And she is not unlike last time. She is preparing a meal. And it is all your favorite smells filling the air. Whatever your particular favorite breakfast items would be, uh, they are there. They are on a table. They are on a plate. And you see cats running around. And Callie, you vaguely feel like you recognize one of them perhaps as your sister but you're not quite sure there's a lot of cats they all have a bit of a, a three quality to them so you don't know but you feel like she might be at peace at least so it appears that your journey is almost done uh, um I don't remember going to sleep here. We we didn't. Uh, I don't remember you being here when I went to bed either, but sometimes things happen that way. You don't have to tell me twice. I've had my share of revels. The good ones, you never wake up where you expect to be. Oh, so this, this is, is normal for you. People have a way of 
finding their way here, even when I don't know they're going to. It's kind of my part of my boon to the God and the beings that I serve. So I'm not as surprised as perhaps you are. Oh, you meant him. Oh, I'm sorry. I. <laughs> Cool. Kelly's going to walk over to Zindar and kind of put a hand on his shoulder or pat it kind of be like, Hey, how, how are you? Um, I'm a little better. I had a long time to think and apparently converse. Um, I um yeah I'm, I'm I'm okay. I just just you know it's just a lot to just take in and you just have to sit in that for a second. And I uh, I don't know if I've completely comprehended it yet, but you know it kind of makes sense. It's weird, but I guess a part of me isn't that surprised. It is. Your bond with each other is, is very strong, and I am impressed and inspired by it. I, I once had those that I felt as close to. She looks wistful for a moment. They made me better. And I, I believe you make yourselves all better as well. And she looks at you and there is a matter of the kings. We were going, well, we originally were going to Melitus to um, talk to the Gorgon to see if she had any information on who the king of the underground could be. I mean, if it's not her, then she's got to know the, the person. Oh, it was her. Was? Um, well, she still is, but... You helped her and you didn't even realize it. Helped her do what? Did you not spend an evening in her chamber healing the sick, repairing the city of Neolanton? How? Oh. Lost. Now she's revered because she helped a lot of people. You spoke to her. Did you not about Farika? About corruption in medicine? He audibly stops talking for just a second. <laughs> just, just nods his head. She's, Shh, sorry. She's scary, okay? She's intimidating. Oh, I am aware. I am, I've known the type was the type myself at one point. And she pulls out a harp that looks vaguely familiar. It looks similar in nature to the harps that you saw in the court of Arrestus that Phoenix had made out of the hair of cloak. It's not the same one of them. It's a little more resplendent. It looks a little more less, less corrupted, less forced and more like this is just how it should be. And she strums on it a little bit. And she says, destiny is a strange thing. Before you came along, she was a criminal, spending her time destroying the lives of others in order to build her own power. But as you say, She's revered now for a different reason. You saved the town that she resided in. She protected the hurt. And you set her on a new path. She uses the same power she wielded before to help others rather than destroy them. This is an admiral task, would you say? Yeah. 
Would you say that you helped the king underground? Yes. I was a, yeah, technically. Indeed. And she places the harp in front of you. Clothis is older than any other god on Theros. Clothis is destiny, right? Yep, fate and destiny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Huh. Well, I don't play music. Perhaps there was a bard amongst you? I was like, I feel like there's like a collective <laughs> turn. Hey, I just look at Marifine. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, what? <laughs> Verifying, there is a item on D&D Beyond that is called the Harp of Destiny. Okay. Where would I find this said Harp of Destiny? If you go to add an item to your inventory, it'll be listed there. It's a homebrew item that I created, um, but it should be there because we're in there. Um, the Harp of Destiny is a harp constructed in the earliest days of Theros as the primordial gods gave way to new generations. It is strung from the discarded hairs of Clothis, the oldest of the gods. A creature that attempts to play the instrument without being attuned to it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take damage, which if you are here attuned to it, won't matter. Um, you may use the action to play, you may use an action to play the instrument and cast one of its spells. Those spells are fly, invisibility, levitate, protection from evil and good, confusion, control weather, or firestorm. Once it's been used to cast one of those spells, you can't be used to cast that same spell again until the next dawn. Uh, you can play the instrument while casting a spell that causes any of its targets to be charmed on a failed saving throw. And uh, the effect applies. So basically, if this is a one of the, this is based on the instruments of the bards. This is, which is very one of my favorite D&D &D things is all these different uh, fun things. Um, when a creature with a song of fate, so one day, once per day, using this harp, you may spend a use of your bardic inspiration to give someone the Song of Fate. Uh, a creature with the Song of Fate makes an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. I can spend a fragment, this bit of fate, to roll additional d20 and choose which d20 to roll. Like basically, you're giving somebody the ability to have advantage on a roll uh, by giving them your bardic inspiration. Oh. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, well, it was a harp of destiny. Uh huh. But it's also it's it's interesting because the the Song of Fate actually allows you to roll your d20 after advantage disadvantage is applied to the roll. So you actually can possibly roll three dice instead of two. Oh. So it's a very powerful ability that you get. Oh, I'm happy to report I found it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that so is a is, step up. <laughs> this is it, your... It, it goes mm -hmm. in my backpack, right? You can put your backpack or your equipment. Oh, okay. Either oh, way. I see, I see, I see. Yeah. So if you want, I, I would equip it as one of your equipment and you have to click a tune so that you are attuned to it. Okay. There we go. All right. Four weapons. Four of us. I think we're good to go, right? I think we still need a fifth, which would mean the, the, the free king who might be a satyr or something? That is what my mom said. A, a satyr that avoided destiny. All right. Look, I can tell you for a fact that the satyrs don't have a king because the satyrs haven't had a king for a hundred years. Uh, because who who would want to be a king? I don't believe that this free king exists because there is no king who's free. How how can you be a king and be free? That's that's a burden. That's something that ties you down. No king is free. Okay, I know that. All right, my everybody, dad. Everybody, everybody, but Lysandros make an insight check. Mm, I don't. I, I'm gonna be. <laughs> I'm gonna be completely honest with you. CB. Just clicked with something <laughs> based on a conversation we just had, <laughs> and Z Xander just Zendar just Xander Zendar just stares for a long time. Look, insight. Lysandros, how old are you? 
I don't really keep track, but uh, how old are you? It's somewhere over a hundred. That's all I can say for sure. There's a couple years there that I don't know are uh, a little iffy. Look, I'm pretty good at reveling. And you are really good at escaping destiny and fate, like you told me yesterday. Yeah. Look, from the description people are giving of a satyr who gave up a kingdom to go live on their own, I might be the free king. But if that is the case, then then I can't help us. Okay? Because I gave up any claim to kingship hundreds of years ago. There hasn't been a kingdom of the satyrs in, in, in far too long. And, and in a sense, maybe, maybe I freed the satyrs from that, okay? Because if I had taken some sort of, of throne and, and, and followed these, these damn prophets saying who I was going to be, who things were going to be, then, you know, the satyrs wouldn't be this, this fun-loving people that they are. They... they they would be stodgy and, and covered in bureaucracy and problems like, like all the other races, okay? So the only thing that I know about myself is that I am free. <laughs> but I don't think I'm a king. Look, well, I'm going to say this. You... No matter what has happened, or might have happened, or could happen, from what I'm hearing, you are as much of a king as I am a demigod. And if I can't escape mine, you can't escape yours. So how do we help you? Look, here's the thing. If, if I'm the free king, I, I don't have anything. I don't own anything. I, I've barely taken anything with me from, from the, the days of my youth. It, the, the things that you own, just they keep you down. They stop you. Points guess... of order. What is it that you most often try to give, but occasionally find rebuked or teased or desperately trying to push? Friendship. Whoa. <laughs> Look, all I have is me and these dice. These are the only things I have from my old life. So if either of those can help, I don't know. And he takes out his sword and he taps the, uh, he, he taps the, so also for those of you who might not remember this, he has gold coins that he wears in his hair and on his horns and stuff that are his IOUs. And he taps one with his sword and all the ones that are on his head meld together into like a little crown thing. It's like, fine. If I have to be a free king, might as well look the part, right? <laughs> it... I don't know if it suits you, but I like the efforts. Yeah, well, it's not going to stick. Well, your friend, Marifine, nailed it. Is your life not better because you have Kali, Zendar, Marifine, even D, perhaps, in it? Are you happier with your adventures with them than you were traveling alone and paying debts and running away? Got to say, it hasn't been bad. You seem obsessed with the idea that being the free king means you have to help a kingdom. But that was never the goal. It was always to help the king. 
There is no fifth artifact, the fifth item that matters the most for defeating the Archons is hope, is compassion, is unity. Those are the things that were brought together by the mortals of this realm and the gods themselves to defeat them the first time. They are the things that will be used again this time. Yeah, I exactly. goes over yep. to Zindar and hits him on the shoulder and goes, what did I tell you? Only four weapons. Ow. Am I right or am I right? And she says, the, the claw, pointing to Kali, the healer to Zindar, the seeker to Marifine, and the trickster to Lysandros. You are the key to this, and your bond will get you through it. I have been here a very long time, but this is not my home. And so I give you my power. And it is time for me to rest because I've been waiting for you for so, so long. And she pulls her hair back, and I'm not going to make you make a check this time. Last time people checked and no one noticed it, but she has pointy elf-like ears, which are not native to this plane. And she says, and finally, it's time for me to go home again. Mm -hmm. And she... leans back and this kind of ethereal glow comes from her and this like warmth spreads out from her and embraces each of you bit by bit. And it's almost like this trace bit of her immortality is being given to each one of you. So none of you are being made immortal, but you're all being given part of what has kept her alive. I mean, for this long, like your demigod. Look, first, <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, so I'm looking at you. I've seen what happened to Hercules, and uh, all right. So, Trust me, man, there are so, rules. <laughs> yeah. So, and as as this happens, you see her start to age, and. She is left as a fairly old, but still alive, mortal elf. And she smiles. And all of you feel more powerful. Because you're all now level 20. Oh, oh. what? Damn. And then she stands up. And she says, it is time for me to go home. And she walks over to a tree. She places her hand on the tree. And it's like she travels through the tree. And as she does, all the cats that are in the villa begin to fade as if they are going off to their resting place. And they're done. And she goes home to rest and you are ready for a final battle and that is where we're going to end tonight's story dang all right yo Ooh. what <laughs> what <laughs> get some leveling up to do yeah oh. everyone have fun and this week leveling up level 20 because that's that was well, that's been in my back pocket oh, for a while. Uh, it's really fun. I, I just, I really want to have a big epic god battle in oh ancient Greece. Like, god. how do you not? Like, <laughs> got all this god godliness. It's ancient Greece. Let's have some. Let's have some Hercules and some Perseus kind of stuff happen now. So, uh, yeah. So everyone, join us uh, next week for the series finale of Dissex Machina, uh, and.
we'll see what happens. Uh, before we head out completely, let's have everyone say good night. I know that it's late for Omega, so we uh, let's not do this too long. But uh, Omega, where can folks find you? Uh, no, yeah, this is I'm literally about to do some character stuff after this, apparently. Uh, <laughs> hi, yeah, my name is Omega Jones, also known as a critical bar, a critical bar across all social media channels, including TikTok. Uh, you can find me everywhere, uh, doing what I do best. What's today, Wednesday? Um, I will say a, a lot of charity stuff is happening for me this week on uh, Saturday, y'all. What are days? Saturday's the 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 seventh, right? No. Saturday is the 6th. On the 6th, yeah. I have a, a, a game uh, over on DD Jordan Lee's uh, Twitch channel. And then on the 7th, I have a game on another game on DD Jordan Lee's channel. But also, I am appearing on uh, Rock Punch ATL for their charity for Extra Life. Um, I get to do a D&D musical one shot. Uh, yeah. be fun. Uh, yeah, other than that, yeah, just check out the socials. There's a lot of stuff you can check out my nerds activations. There's a lot of awesome, cool people. You know, when I say nerds, I mean literally nerds. Uh, the green one is me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, check my socials, and that's that's really that. I think, yep, that's it. Excellent. Uh, let's go ahead and say hello again to or goodbye, I guess to say tonight to uh, to Jordan. Hi, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen. You can find me online at Jordan Pigeon uh, on Twitter. And uh, I. Uh, you can also check out a lot of my older RPG work here on the Saving Throw channel. Go back on the YouTube and check out Wild Cards. We have uh, three whole campaigns of fun stuff. And uh, there's Wild Cards, Legacy, uh, run by GM Stephen Pope, who still does stuff on the channel and stuff and um lots of other things there's a bunch so go check out some of those they're all really fun and uh, if you want to see some of the current stuff i'm doing uh, i work for the command zone youtube channel so if you like magic the gathering and commander uh there was a recent episode of extra turns that just came out last week so you can see uh, ashlyn and i playing a game of magic that was pretty fun and i just got to host an episode of the podcast uh, this week. So if you want to see me talk about politics in Magic the Gathering, uh, go check that out. Excellent. Uh, let's say goodbye, good night to Ashlyn. Ashlyn, where can the folks find you? Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Twitter at Ashlyn Rose. Uh, I'm on Instagram as rar it's Ashlyn. And uh, you can check out my voiceover work on my website at ashlynrose.com. Uh, same thing as Jordan, all of my older D and D work can be found on the saving throw show channel on YouTube. You have, uh, dark lanterns. Um, you have, uh, Eberron is the same thing. So I'm going to go with the broken pact. Broken pact, uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. That I think all of it's night for some reason, but I can't figure out why anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Huh. Um, and, uh, lots of really good things on there. And, uh, as well, work at the command zone. We have a lot of really fun stuff coming up, and we've been just releasing extra turns episode. That's really, really fun. Uh, my Essex deck is on there that people have been asking me about. So check that out. Jordan's on there too, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So definitely check it out. And our incredible invisible bard, uh, Joy, where can we find you? Hello. Oh, well, invisibility is one of my powers, so I mean, it worked yeah. out today. <laughs> Should have used that yeah, to my. Yeah, just bit. method acting it. <laughs> Um, yeah, you can find me here on Twitch and Twitter is Curious Joy. And this wor this weekend, I am also doing Extra Life. So hopefully technology does not hate me because I have an entire schedule plan starting Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So, yeah, that's uh, what I'm doing. It'll be my sixth year doing Extra Life. So nice. I'm hoping to do all this stuff. <laughs> Excellent. Extra Life is amazing. We, we, we did some Extra Life stuff a couple of years ago with Broken Pack. That was really fun to do. We had a lot of fun with that. Um, hey, you can find me on Twitter at Riley J. Silverman, on Instagram at Riley Silverman. Uh, tomorrow morning is the release of the next episode of Port Saga, the vampire mis murder mystery uh, podcast that I'm on. Uh, also, uh, we have a couple of big, uh, I had two other things I wanted to bring up. Um, oh, tomorrow I'm going to be on D&D Beyond talking about my favorite uh, 
uh, subclass. So that'll be really fun to talk about. Uh, so check that out. That's noon Pacific time on D&D Beyond. Uh, and then Friday night, I'm actually going to be, uh, we're doing the mid-season finale of the improvised hospital drama that I do for Ripley Improv called Heartbeat. Uh, this special episode is going to be actually a fundraiser uh, for a member of the LA Improv community, uh, Corey Wazinski who has some health problems that he has a GoFundMe for. So any of the money we raise during the show is going to go towards Corey. And there's also a GoFundMe that Ripley Improv is prom promoting. So check that out. But also just check out the show and support the show and, and hope we can raise some money that way. Uh, so that is this Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific time on uh, twitch.tv slash Ripley Improv. And that will be it for me tonight as well. And we really hope, thank you all for supporting the show tonight. Thank you for your support all season, for the whole series. And... Uh, tune in next week for the epic series finale of Dice. <laughs>